Hello everyone and welcome back to Death Stranding. In the last session, we headed over to a mule camp. Mules are delivery dependent. Hooked on making deliveries, only interested in cargo. If you're not carrying any cargo, they'll ignore you completely. Ha! Huh, good to know. Yeah, we headed into a mule camp. We took down three mules, I think. Two of them stealthily, one of them less so. Uh, and then we went off to the wind farm. Oh yeah, and we learned how to make bridges. Very nice. Made a bridge, headed off to the wind farm, got captured by the BTs for the first time, and uh, some creepy dolphin tentacle motherfucker was uh, all all up in our grill. But we managed to escape that, made it to the wind farm, and deposited our stuff. And so, now we are going to be travelling back to base from the wind farm with any deliveries they want to make. But we also have a couple of interviews to read first. I promised we would do those. Uh, and then, yes, we'll be heading back across. And I need to remember to start <laughs> start loading before I start recording, because, wow, that was a long loading screen. Right. Okay, so, uh, interviews first. Let's do them. Oh, yeah, and we got a mail to read. We got a lot of mail to read, actually. Uh these ones first, I guess. We'll do them in this order. Sam the Man, our saviour. Wait, is this, this isn't the one I already read, was it? I thought I had already read these. Oh, right, this one's, yeah, these are sort of greyed out. Oh, right, yeah, okay, no, it's because the envelope, the envelope symbol is, uh, closed on this one. Because they had exclamation marks, I thought that meant that we hadn't read them, but it just means they were tagged as important. Gotcha. Okay, just one to read. Still alive, new guy? Sam, how you doing out there? For a newbie, you're quite the workhorse, huh? Timefall's probably taking its toll on your equipment, am I right? Maybe some of your kit's not even usable anymore? Well, don't jump the gun and throw that stuff away just yet. One thing you can do is take your old equipment to a delivery terminal and recycle it. You can then fabricate yourself a shiny new whatever to use instead. Don't know if you're aware, but the whole recycling system is operated by the Bridget Strand Foundation. That's right, the President herself set it up as a means to convert busted tools and gear back into usable resources. On the other hand, if your equipment's only halfway to broke but you still want to part ways, you could choose a share locker to donate it to another porter whose need is greater than yours. You may well end up getting a like or two for your generosity, never mind the warm fuzzy feeling of having helped your fellow man. Of course, the system works both ways, meaning you can snag stuff other porters have put in share lockers too, if you're the one who could do with a helping hand. Anyway, both the recycling system and the share lockers have their uses, and it's up to you to pick which method best suits your needs at any given moment. You've still got a lot to learn, I guess, but you'll have it all figured out in no time. I've got high hopes for you, kid. Thumb, 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 thumb. Cool. Very cool. Oh yes, and we also got this bridges links. Bridge links. Display players with whom you have bridge links. A bridge link is another way of describing the connection between you and another porter. If you want to forge a powerful bond, consider a strand contract. The bridge link screen. Here you can view a list of other players you've interacted with, along with their details. You can also further strengthen your connection to other players here through the formation of strand contracts. Forming a strand contract with a player makes their structures and lost cargo easier to see. After using X to select view your own records, use L1 and R1 to switch between various records. Oh, this person's delivery volume is... Oh, wait, no, it's just... Never mind. Oh, man. <laughs> Check out this dude. Porter Grader 96, and he's got 45 on the bridge link. He's got... Man, that's crazy. What are my stats? Total likes received 2,600, and 2,400 of those are from NPCs. What about my dude here? 14,000, but only 5,000 are from NPCs. Mad. That is mad. So how have I interacted with him? I've never liked him, apparently. And he's never liked me. What have I... How have I interacted with him? Hmm. Well, I don't actually... It's not... I can't click him. So I'm not sure... I thought I'd have to click him to form a bond or something, but... Doesn't seem like... Hmm. Hmm. What am I missing here? I don't think I can do anything with this. 
none of the buttons do anything. I can... Oh, this is just all, and this is interactive with. Okay. But I can't... Yeah. There's no way to, like, actually click them or do anything with them. So, I guess... I don't know. Don't know why I can't do anything with that yet. Uh, holy shit. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> that is a lot of stuff I've not read. Okay. Humanity's biggest problem? Logistics. War and famine have been inescapable parts of human life since the rise of our species. And while the fall of America hasn't changed this fundamental truth, it's fair to say that these issues aren't pressing concerns. Can you remember the last time you've heard of a prepper dying of star starvation, much less someone in a not city? No one's fighting over water or oil or anything else. Which isn't to say that people don't occasionally run out of supplies, but that's almost never because of a real shortage. It's usually a problem with logistics. In fact, it was to address such problems that the president created bridges and developed the chiral network. So yeah, no one's that desperate. Everyone's got enough for themselves, which is what's led to the real problem. It's all too easy for people to become isolated from one another, and eventually forget that others even exist. People are free to live for themselves, for the moment, without a care for the future. The president understood this better than anyone, and I know just how much it pained her. Huh. How, did we read this? Hmm. I guess we did. I don't remember reading that. Necrosis and the ancient Egyptian view of life and death, three years ago. The Egyptians believed that we humans were composed of two elements, the ha and the ka, the body and the soul. Various texts expound upon their nature in detail, but perhaps it's simplest to conceive of them as follows. The soul is that which joins with the child in the womb and gives life to the body. It's also that which departs the body upon death. Ergo, the body is simply a vessel. Should the soul return to it, it will live again. This is precisely what is observed in near-death experiences, a soul separated, albeit briefly, from its body. The Egyptians believed death not to be an instantaneous change of state, but a process, a process by which the soul moves from one realm to another. But this process itself has changed thanks to the death stranding. In the normal order of things, when death occurs, the soul vacates the body and passes into the seam. From there, it transitions to the beach, and only then onto the world of the dead. But after the stranding, a soul that has already made its journey to the beach may attempt to return to its body in this world. It was hard to believe at first, but the process of necrosis provided proof of this phenomenon that was difficult to deny. This is why it's imperative that we burn the bodies of the dead. The body must be destroyed to sever the link with the soul. Only then will the soul be free to journey to the world beyond. Chiral symmetry. The word chiral comes from the Greek kihir, meaning hand. Compare your left with your right. They seem similar in both size and shape, yes? Now face your palms away from you and place one hand over the other. Their shapes do not overlap exactly. But place your palms together and voila, a match. It's as if one hand is the mirror image of the other. But again, if you were to actually compare the mirror image of your hand to itself, we would see that the two are not identical. This is the essence of chirality, the state in which the mirror image of a shape does not match the original. It has been theorised that BTs are mirror images of ourselves. Were we to exist in the same point in time and space, our shapes, as it were, would not overlap neatly onto one another, save in reflection. And when our particles meet their opposites, a void out occurs. The new form of communication we've devised utilises beaches, which are akin to mirrors reflecting this world and the other, hence the term chiral network. Chirelium. You would like to know more about chirelium? Well, wouldn't we all? I'm happy to present the latest theories, but you must be aware that this is all that they are, theories. Chirelium, like dark matter, was born along with our universe and has existed ever since, just not in a dimension we're able to perceive. Until now. It is the beach that gives us access to that dimension, and with it knowledge of Chirelium's existence. Not just knowledge of it, of course. We have since observed it coalescing into crystalline form, and recorded measurable physical and mental effects of individuals exposed to it. It has reshaped our understanding of reality, and proven instrumental in the formulation of the multiverse theory of beaches. Chiral matter is not affected by the passage of time. As far as these particles are concerned, none has elapsed since the Big Bang. Little wonder they escaped our notice for so long, until man and BT first came together in void out and left nothing but chirelium in their wake. Many of these claims are yet to be verified, but I believe that this is a fair summary of the scientific community's current consensus on the matter, no pun intended. Wait, what's the pun? Oh, the matter, I guess? because Chirelium is some type of matter. I shall soon be heading west with the first expedition, and I look forward to learning more about Chirelium and its connections to the beach along the way. Chiral Contamination 1. 
Chiral contamination is a result of prolonged exposure to chiral radiation, which is emitted by chirillium, a substance discovered at the same time as the beach. Prolonged exposure can significantly impact physical and mental health. The effects are not dissimilar from those observed in individuals exposed to extremely high levels of stress, levels which can be fatal even. Such traumatic experiences can alter hormonal secretions, impair immune response, contribute to heart failure and induce strokes. The most common symptom of chiral ki contamination is poor sleep quality due to vivid nightmares. If left unchecked, however, it can quickly progress a more... Two? Should that be two, a more advanced stage? In which the aforementioned issues may be observed. The pot potential impact on an individual's mental health cannot be understated. The resulting hormonal imbalances frequently lead to heightened destructive impulses towards the self and others. Those dominated by such urges are, no are named homo demons, the mad ones. In the case of some porters, such as mules, impaired memory and judgment has led them to develop an irrational obsession with, a with their profession, hence the homo gestalt moniker. Huh. While it should be feasible and preferable for most individuals to avoid con chiral contamination at all costs, there are those with a demonstrated resistance who need not be so cautious. I speak, of course, of doomed sufferers. Hmm. Which is what I am. The discovery of beaches and the concept of death. With the discovery of the beach, the fundamental truth of death was upended. I doubt you'll find many who would deny this. Alas, we can say little with confidence in any objective or scientific capacity, for our understanding of this new realm remains in its infancy and is ever-evolving, much like our understanding of the universe as a whole. Perhaps the closest thing we have to a working explanation of the beach relates to, its, relates to the conception of a multiverse, but I digress. The beach is arguably both a concept and a reality. Oh, hello. And a reality. A discrete beach is influenced by the mind of the associated individual and therefore linked to them irrevocably. This is why we have so energetically pursued the psychological, psychoanalytical, and neuroscientific angles when attempting to create a unified theory of the Death Stranding, the beach, and related phenomena. There was a fad a little while back in which subjects underwent counselling in order to learn more about their beaches, and in so doing, gain a greater understanding of the nature of death. Doom sufferers in particular provided an excellent opportunity for study. An interesting theoretical question arose during that period. If a person's beach was a product of their consciousness, might animals have beaches as well? A conundrum on the surface, perhaps, but one quickly resolved. Only human corpses undergo necrosis and become BTs, which, prov which proves somewhat conclusively that only a human can possess a beach. Hmm. But, um... There, were dol there was a dolphin. There was a dolphin that, like, attacked us when we got dragged under by the human BTs. It was like a dolphin BT, so I don't know about that. This was three years ago, so maybe stuff's changed since then. And yet this begs another question. If all that is required is consciousness akin to that of a human, could an AI have a beach? An android? I, for one, do not believe so. Why? Because the function of our beaches is to connect the worlds of the living and the dead. If an entity was never born, has not truly lived and will never know death, surely it cannot have a beach. Thanks Hartman. Now on to Mama, the Chiral Network 1. Three years ago before the first expedition's departure. So the core infrastructure is complete. The basic Cupid ready chiral network setup is good to go. Now all we have to do is connect Central Knot City to the capital and prove that it actually works. Sadly, I won't be here to see it. I've been assigned to the expedition team's second group, so I'll be heading west with the others. But the people in charge here are the best of the best. They'll have network operational in inside of three years, just as planned. I'm sure of it. And while they're seeing to that, we'll be visiting towns and whatnot across the country and putting up the facilities. Putting words, putting the facilities in place for when things are finally up and running. Emily and the others in the lead group will be forging the connections and laying the groundwork to make sure everything goes to plan. Afterwards, we'll just need to link it all up with operational cupids, and that should be that. Heh. It's kind of like the Apollo missions back in the day. They used a three stage rocket to get to the moon, right? Well, we're using a three-stage process to do something almost as revolutionary. Bridges staff. Two years ago, distribution centre west of Capital Knot City. I'm a bit worried. Okay, no. Well, I'm, I'm worried how it's going to work once uh, I have more than just this page of stuff to read. Because if it doesn't scroll down on its own... It's going to be hard to know which one has an exclamation mark over it if they disappear when you hover over it. We'll see if that's an issue later. It doesn't matter yet. Uh, two years ago. It's been about a year now since we came here with the rear guard. This is from Bridges' staff. 
The first folks through did us a favour of setting up the chiral relay and patching things up before we arrived, so we're doing alright. Not so sure about everyone else though. Folks back home sound kind of freaked out. We don't know what's going on in Central or Capital, let alone how Emily and the others who keep kept heading west are doing, but something doesn't feel right. What's more, a lot of the guys have developed some kind of agoraphobia, like the thought alone of going outside scares the shit out of them. See, the distro centres and way stations around these parts here aren't like the ones back east. They're much more isolated, out in the middle of nowhere. Can't help but feel cut off from the world. And there's not a lot of staff on hand neither, which means you'll often have to do the work of two guys, which can make it just that much lonelier too. And then you factor in the terrorism rumours. Also, is it just me, or does it feel like there's more mules out there these days? Don't get me wrong, I know they're not out to get us, all they want is our cargo, right? Well, that doesn't change the fact that they're not making our work any easier. Especially since a lot of these guys used to be first-rate porters, and could run things around- run rings around us if they hadn't, you know. Still, for now, the network systems are up and running, and we're just holding out for the day when the second expedition comes through with a working cupid. Till then, we'll keep things chugging along. That much we can do. For bridges and country, am I right? Whew. That was a lot of reading. Goodness gracious me. And a load more tips. Okay, it looks like it does scroll down ahead of you. So if so long as the interviews work in the same way that this does, we'll be able to see what we haven't read yet. So that's all good. Nice. <laughs> Wait, how come it still says there's stuff I haven't read here? What? How is that possible? I literally just went over the whole thing. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Cool. Finally, let's activate the terminal and uh, take on orders. Congrats, Sam. You're cleared to take on open orders. While they're not as high priority as the ones specifically assigned to you, if you're already heading a certain way and you have room to spare, it couldn't hurt to do a little more, right? Just because they're not mission critical doesn't mean they're not important to someone. So why not do a good deed or two? Sure. Orders for Sam. Resins delivery, distribution center west of Capital Not City. Bridges has printing materials stored at the wind farm. We'd like you to bring some to the distro center. These materials are pretty varied, and to get the most out of the Cairo printer, we need as many different types as we can get. Cool. Confirm Marino. Less than 50% damage. Deliver all six containers. Sounds good. Hey, great work. That wind farm you've brought into the network is essential for our continued expansion. By way of reward, I've added a little something to your PCC. A generator option. Generators recharge the batteries of all nearby devices. That includes machines, bikes, and other battery-powered vehicles. Cool. Appreciate it. Wind-powered generator capable of charging vehicles and equipment within its immediate vicinity. Right. Is there any way of seeing what I've currently got equipped? Not sure. Uh, oh, number owned three. All oh, right. Well, in that case, never mind. <laughs> uh, number owned already one. Oh, is that is that the number in the bottom left? Do I have three container repair repair spray as well? Yeah. Okay. Although one's empty. Uh, I mean, a second ladder is probably good to get. Yeah, that'll do, right? Okay, load all. Which takes us to 72. Okay, well, there's all the resins. Auto arrange cargo. Okay, it's going to be a bit tricky. <laughs> oh, 
Are we going to need the extra PCCs? Maybe not. Hmm. Well, let's see how we go. Nope. Confirm. Oh, but with this much stuff... I wish there was a way. I don't want to head out. I just want to go back to the menu. But you have to click OK to head out and then go back in. I'm not going to be able to... Uh, I'm not going to be able to accept any of these other ones, am I? The standard orders. Sam, double check the order summary. Delivering materials to increase facility stores. Completing delivery of materials to a given facility will increase the amount of available at that facility for the construction of weapons and equipment and for other functions. There's a limit to the amount of materials that a given facility can store. L1, R1 to switch between tabs to check items to be delivered. That's to Capital Not. That's to that way station. And this is to where I'm going anyway, but it's an extra 15 kilograms, man. I don't know about that one. Power supply inspection tools. Hmm. I mean... We can try. Hmm. Maybe we don't need everything we've got. What are these tools? Oh the, oh, the tools of the thing we're delivering. Right, okay. Hmm. Got a couple of PCCs. We've got three PCCs, actually. Probably don't need three. Let's see how hard it is to walk, shall we? We also don't know if we're even going to have anything get in our way. Oh, he's struggling. He is certainly struggling. Order of time. 87. Like, potentially... A path you laid down was used by someone else. Lovely. Potentially, we're not going to... Uh, take my likes. Not going to run into any BTs and stuff. Nice, nice. Spooky ghosts. Oh, hey, there's a bridge over there now. That wasn't there before. Right, let's take things nice and steady. Slow and steady does, in fact, win the race. Someone's been peeing over here. Pick up. Oh! Huh. So you pee somewhere, and the mushrooms start to form, and then crypto biotes come to feed on the mushrooms? Cool. That is cool. Okay, what is the purpose of this bridge here, though? It seems to bridge a gap that doesn't need bridging. <laughs> Am I being silly here, or is this just not needed? Structure menu. Damn it, I keep doing that. I don't hold it down. What are the options here? Upgrade. Durability. I, I'm sorry, that's a lot of durability. <laughs> 237,000 durability. Very nice. I can dismantle it. Savage. No. You're good. I mean, thanks. This one's for you. I'm just not super certain on its use. <laughs> I mean, I guess walking over the bridge is easier than walking over the land, but I definitely can't 
Definitely can't be picking anything else up. Okay, well, hopefully we're not going to run into any BTs. Hopefully we're not going to run into any mules. Everything's going to be hunky-dory, A-OK. -okay. Huh. Hello. Postbox level two. I'll give it a bunch of lights. Today's a good day. I don't need it though. Okay, onwards. Too close. Was it too close? I feel like there wasn't an issue there. There's the metals I dropped. Feels bad. Someone else can do that. Medical instrument. Can't remember what that was for. Are we... This is the right way, right? Yeah, I've just got a head. Oh, actually. Yeah, it's up here and then ladder down. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a bit hairy. Can we even make it up here? I assume we must be able to. It looks a bit steep, though. Oh, there's a ladder there. That could have been easier. Well, we're on this path now. Let's see if we can continue. This is very steep. Back so steep that it is almost not making it. <laughs> sure. Heavy stuff. What is this? What am I liking? What's he done? <laughs> I don't know what that actually is. Oh, right. The rope. Can I grab it? Hello? Grab the rope, thank you. You can keep liking it whilst you're climbing it. Oh wait, no. Not infinitely. Okay, is this useful? <laughs> Where am I now? So that's going to take me down there. Oh. Is this somewhere I couldn't have got to on my own? Seems like it's going to be kind of steep around there anyway, right? Can I walk up there? What's my map saying now? I am off the beaten path is what my map's saying. Hmm. I've somehow... Kind of fucked it. <laughs> Hang on. Let's, let's keep trying. Let's just uh, jump your way down there, lad. Let's see if we can course correct ourselves. Head on up this way. rope over there. There's also a ton of oh man, there's a ton of pyro crystals. Holy.
How much do they weigh? I don't remember. There's so many. Or do they not add to the total? Do they not add to your weight? Because I'm not seeing... That's crazy if they don't. I'm not seeing that number go up. That number normally goes up if you pick up something that, you know, is going to take your weight. Okay, is there a way down here? Oh, shit. Keep it together. I mean, I guess the way down here is to place my own ladder, right? How do I do that again? Do I have a second ladder on the other page? I do. Okay, phew. Good. Now get on it. <laughs> uh... He's not getting on it. I don't want to just... Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, that was hairy. Shift your weight. Come on, dude. You can do it. Take my likes. You. Thanks for the help. Uh, we're going to be okay getting off this end? Yep, okay. That's fine. Interesting. Wait, what happened there? I just got a red flash. That hurt me somehow? Oh boy. Let's grab this. Uh oh, is it getting darker? Thanks for the help. Recover rope. Oh, I dismantled it. It seems like it's getting darker. I need to start hurrying up. Don't want no time for. Don't want no time for coming. Is this a watchtower? This one's for you. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. I want to use it. That is a lot of shit. <laughs> Holy. Okay. Well, we're in sight of our destination now. So that's something. Just going to need to find a way to get down there. It's getting pretty windy now. Email received from Nick Easton. Cargo quantity and your porter grades. We'll read that next part because... Coming up to uh, about a part's length here. So we'll try and get back. More Low Raw. I've got to say, everything I've heard from Low Raw so far is making me want to buy Low Raw's albums. I really like it. It's just a shame that they... <laughs> All strike my videos, but uh, what can you do? It's not the band's fault. It's those darn publishers. All the Kyrelium. They've just got such a nice vibe about them, which... Oh, fuck. Come on, come on, save it. Which is probably why... Uh, 
Kojima picked them <laughs> to be a large part of the music in his game. It's really good walking music, isn't it? It's just good vibes. Okay, there's the bridge. <laughs> just need to make it down here. Is this a smooth walk down? I forget. Seems like it could be. I'm all about a smooth walk down. Waystation west of Capital Not City. Which one's that? Is that the one we're going to? That's Distribution Center. That's the way station. Okay. If that was just needed to take it here because we're so close and it's kind of plain sailing now, I'd probably have picked it up. But I'm probably not going to the way station, so you're all right, lad. Oh, it's such a nice feeling to be, like, within sight and there's no, like, obstacles left in my way kind of thing. It's a really strange feeling. Because normally, like, you see your objective in a game, and it's just down a hill. It doesn't feel like, oh, what a relief. Like, but in this game, because I've just been trying to scale mountains and worried about my cargo and everything, in this game, seeing that, seeing that bridge over the water and safety, feels real good. <laughs> real good indeed. Don't. Okay. You know what? I'm not even going to turn around to get that. I was going to pick up some more of that stuff, but it's fine. <laughs> Who needs it? Not me. Okay, straight down here. Turn over this way. Oh, hello. There's a bunch of bridges now. Oh, that's so cool to see. I really like this, um... Like, how... how not. I don't know what the best word is. Not multiplayer, but, you know, cooperatively helping people. I really like how it works and how once you connect, lots of options then appear for these bridges and things. It's really cool. It's really well done. Hey, Sam. You could probably get that bike running again if you charged it with a generator. Why oh, yeah? A try? I would love to give it a try, if I'm being totally honest. If I could bike across these parts, that would be fantastic. And I assume I could attach cargo to my bike as well. Tell me more. We are here. We are home. Wasn't it on the opposite side? Was that where the bike was? Just like hanging out somewhere over there? Ah, oh, there it is. I don't know what the point of these things is. These little signs that you can like. Is it just to give a reason to like people randomly? Okay, PCC. Post box. Bridge. <laughs> Not quite. Watchtower. Generator. Here we go. Obstacle detected. How about right here? What a game changer this would be. Is this someone else's bike? Someone else made this bike? Oh no, that's something there. Oh my god, used vehicle. Okay, well not yet, because we need to turn all this stuff in, but... Oh my god, that's going to make things so much better. Although... 
That being said, I can only, I've only, that's the first bike and only bike I've ever seen. And I'm assuming they can break and stuff. And we don't have a way to make bikes ourselves. So I'm going to have to be very careful with it. I assume at some point we'll probably be able to craft our own vehicles. But until then, a little bit of a worry. No, don't, don't, don't drop all your stuff at the final hurdle, mate. That would be a tragedy. Oh, we made it. Make delivery. Deliver requested cargo. Lovely. You know what? The way back was all right. Well, don't do things by halves, do you? Hard to believe one man could bring in a hole this big. Then again, you are a legend. I like him bigging me up. Hell yeah! Oh, following sound data can be listened to in your private room. Oh, only in the private room. To use it for a structure, gain access to a level two or higher structure, then select customize. Oh, so you can like. Set music to play out of stuff that you build. That's cool. New materials available. Resins up hugely. You love to see it. Uh, connection level increased has provided the following new hologram data. Benjamin Hancock. What does that mean? New interview data acquired. Chiral contamination 2 and BTs are reaching out to us. Some of this facility's bandwidth has been shared with Sam. Lovely. More structures can now be built. And the amount and max amount of stuff has all increased. Oh my god, quite a lot actually. The metals especially. It's gone up by like 3,000. Yikes. Cool. Yep, skip all that. Lovely jubbly. I don't know anyone who's done more to bring people together and get them back on their feet. It's hard to believe you're just one guy. Oh, please, stroke my ego. Great deliverer isn't actually a small army. Because it sure seems like whenever someone's in trouble, you're there to lend a hand. It's enough to make me think you just might make it all the way to the coast. Good luck out there. I'll be rooting for you. Appreciate it. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further. Okay. What have we got now? Orders for Sam. 